So here's the hand, and let's proceed with street-by-street -street analysis. So preflop, it folds to the small blind, who looks like he raises to two and a half big blinds, and Gabe calls from the big blind. So preflop is very, very standard. When the small blind raises to $5 here, he risks $4 to win $3. So that would require Gabe to defend 40-some percentage of his range, and that's not counting the fact that when Gabe does call, his opponent gets to see a flop. So Gabe's probably got to call like 50-60% of his range here preflop. So king 9 off is just not even going to be close. It's way too strong to randomize with as a bluff. It's definitely going to be in the calling range. On the flop, we get a 9 of diamonds, 3 of spades, 10 of spades. And the opponent checks to us. So the first thing that I think when I see this board texture and my opponent checks to me is this is a board texture that's very hard to check raise out of position, especially when there's reasonable stack sizes behind. And since the small blind only opened to $5 and the big blind called, there's only a $10 pot, or I guess it's $9 after the rake here. So the pot's smaller than it usually is even in a raised pot. So it's going to be very hard for his opponent to check raise him here because there's so many turn and river cards which make his life very difficult after he check raised the flop even if he check raised with a value hand so for example if his opponent check raises with a set you know a lot of spades put flushes in gabe's range you know a lot of cards can like jacks queens kings can put straights in gabe's range so can an eight so once one of those cards does churn it's often going to give gabe either the best hand or it's going to make it very hard to continue getting a lot of value with a set so if his opponent does check raise with pocket threes, for example, on the flop, it's going to be very hard to keep getting value on a queen of spades turn. Because if Gabe does call down, he'll likely have the set beat, or maybe rarely, you know, Gabe will call down with the worst two pair, but that's not all that often. So it's a very hard board to check raise due to the wet board texture. Having said that, we have a read here. We know our opponent is check raise happy. So we're going to be less surprised to get check raised here if we do bet the flop than against most other players. So now we have to think whether or not we want to bet this flop or check back this flop. So if we bet this flop in position, it's a very good board to bet two streets of value and check back the river because there's so many, um, there's so many turns in river cards which can give us the worst hand since king nine is very vulnerable. You know, any over card can give our opponent the best hand. So by betting, we take away our opponent's ability to see a free card. So going bet, bet, check here is going to be much better than it will be on a board like if the board was king, seven, two, and we had pocket queens. We're less afraid of giving free cards. There's not that many cards that can turn where we have, you know, where we got outdrawn. Here we're going to get outdrawn a lot if we give free cards. And our hand in blind versus blind is probably strong enough to bet for two streets. So those are those are really good reasons to bet the flop in the turn. Checking back the flop has a couple of advantages as well. The first is when the turn card does come, our opponent is usually going to lead with all of his hands that we're planning on check raising the flop. So we're just going to usually call the turn, call the river, and we'll have lost a much smaller pot and not be put in a very tough decision after the flop checked through. Our opponent bets the turn and the river, and we still got in the two streets we wanted, and we didn't get put in a very tough spot or put a lot of money in the middle. So that's a really nice thing about it. In addition, we give our opponent a chance to bluff on the turn and the river so we can pick off bluffs by just checking back the flop and then he thinks we're weak as well. We call the turn and the river and we win a medium-sized pot, which is much easier to call down than after betting the flop getting check-raised and you know facing a big bet on the turn and the river. 